Hello and welcome to Zove Talks Photography. Today we're going to be speaking about a special lens. It's something that everybody wants, is the easy way to put it. And luckily we have someone who's been using it, because I haven't used it myself, but he'll be giving us a breakdown of how he likes it, why he likes it, and it is, you may have seen the video before about him talking about his camera. Chris from Arkansas. Hi Chris, welcome back. What's up Zolf, how are you doing today? Yeah, good, thanks. Great to have you here again speaking about your lens. I spoke to you on the previous video and we were getting into the lens, but I thought I want to save that for a whole separate video. Mm -hmm. So let's have a chat about your Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Yes, look at that, beautiful. This thing weighs like a tank, like it is literally like a pound in of itself. It definitely looks it. But yeah, um, just to get uh, just to get really quick into the lens, the Sigma 18 to 35 is an f 1.8 uh, aspherical lens. Um, it is. It's not mincing words when I literally say it is the lens. When you said uh, it's the lens everybody wants, I have not met somebody or talked to somebody that has used crop sensor or micro four thirds sensors that has not either a wanted this lens or b bought it and used it till it broke. Um, they are just super. Uh, it's, since it's an eighteen to thirty-five, it's super wide. It is the one point eight, so it's super fast. It has a, it's a lot of light in, so it's perfect for pretty much anything most people would use it for. So anything, um, tight quarters, product shots, um, weddings, low light events. It just does pretty much anything you need for it. But there's the biggest draw drawback on it is that it it does weigh a ton. Like it is seriously, my G, uh, my GH five and my lens weigh the exact same. So this thing is practically useless on any gimbal. So you have to go either handheld or you have to use a much larger gimbal than you might actually have because I don't have a gimbal. I use a Steadicam. <laughs> ah, right. And what would you say is the next comparable lens to that one? So did you have a choice between buying the two? Is there anything that comes close? Yes. The Canon 16 to 35 millimeter full frame lens, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. I think that tops out, at, I think it's a 2.8 or yeah. I think it's a 2.0 lens. Um, but it's full frame instead. So it's literally a almost one-to-one -one comparable lens. And if you go to full frame photography or a full frame videography, that is the direct comparison lens that you want to get. The only reason I went with this one versus the Canon is because, um, in our last video, I had referenced me working at my uh, church prior and they actually had a couple of Sigma 18 to 35s that we used on our cameras and everything to make things, you know, a little bit easier, um, for a service, uh, we call it service production stuff. Um, so I got a lot of experience out of the 18 to 35, just working at the church normally. So I figured there wasn't really a point for me to switch over and try to relearn and uh, relearn a lens whenever I already had a bunch of experience with this one. Uh, yeah, definitely. And do you think that extra weight, you get that return back from the image quality and how you use it? Are you willing to carry that around being a heavier lens? Or do you get your full use out of it as it were? I personally do. Um, I have a lot, I've seen a lot of people complaining online. I can't really call it complaining, venting online about how heavy it is. And like it honestly, after a full day of shooting with it, it is a substantial weight to have on there. It, it's holding like an extra pound and a half out all day while you're using your camera and it, that weighs on you. But I think that the image quality does take care of it. Um, just by how sharp it is, how fast it is and how good the image actually looks. Um, just in camera, you don't even have to do any extra effects on it just because it looks so solid just coming straight out of it. Um, I think it's personally worth it. It's honestly two primes in one for me because I used a 35 millimeter and a, um, I think it was a 24 millimeter Canon lens before. And it took care of both of those in one. It even gave me a bit of a longer uh, back end on it. So yeah, it took care of most of my lenses that I was using and condensed them into one <clears throat> comparable one. <laughs> Oh, wow. And have you ever come to a, a, well, an occasion where you've thought, you know what, I'm lucky I got this lens, where you got that shot which you wouldn't have got with another one, for example? 100%. Um, this year, back in um, back in August, I want to say is what it was, it was August or July, me and a group of my friends did the 48-hour film contest in uh, look, look, uh, right here in Arkansas, in Little Rock. And um, our short film had to be a drama it was a drama with um, a character, a prop, and a line of dialogue we had to use. And um, if I remember right, I'll actually send you the short whenever I'm done here. I was, I was the DP for that one, and we had two shots that I'm, like, super proud of. Mm -hmm. And it was one of them. It was a tracking shot following our main character down the street and into the, into the building. Um, 
by having the wide wide angle lens, I was able to not only keep everything like in fo in frame at all times. There was no like, oh, he's sliding in and out of frame. No, it's he's always in frame. And it was almost like a third person view, like a, almost like a third person GTA camera or something like that. And it looked really cool going through it. But then going from there, in uh, once we went inside the building, if I remember right, it was towards the end of the film. We had a shot and um, trying to think what it was. Oh yeah, it was very Edgar Wright esque, from what, if I remember right. And it was we mounted the camera to the door and we had it like at the, at the, at the uh, top of the door, aiming down at the handle and focusing on the handle. So as the main character grabbed the handle, opened it, and the door swung, it swung with it. But if we would have had it tight or had a tight shot, like a fifty millimeter or seventy five millimeter lens, it would have been too tight on the handle. We wouldn't have been able to see like what's going on, who's opening it up, who's doing these things. Wow, okay, that sounds okay. So is this something you would recommend if someone's in the budget to look at a wide lens? What, if you're in a budget for a wide lens, um, first off, I do recommend you actually playing around with as many lenses as you can to figure out what your style is for it. For me personally, I love wide angle lenses. Wide angle is my jam. Mm -hmm. I don't really do a whole lot of telephoto stuff, which is why I haven't touched the Sigma 50 to 100. But um, after that, there's a lot of comparable alternatives. Like most, uh, what do you call them? Most manufacturers have their own equivalent. They're just not nearly as you know robust as this one is. Uh, Lumix actually has their own, um, I think it's a 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens, mm -hmm. which covers pretty much the same range as this, but it's a lot slower. It's like a F3.5 to F6. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're really wanting to get the Sigma 18 to 35, they usually sell for around seven to $800. But then you can find them on eBay, typically for about five hundred. I think I got mine for, I think I got mine for four fifty because I got mine on like, dude was trying to sell it like then and there, and mm -hmm. I wasn't going to question it. And if you're buying on eBay, you have buyer protection. If you're buying on eBay, it's really it's really safe for you because they have all sorts of protections put in place for you guys. Um, so I definitely recommend if you're looking for it, check out eBay because they are amazing for deals on that. Ah, that's really interesting. What would you say to the third-party manufacturers that you get the Rokinons and the really wide ones, the cheaper Chinese-make ones? Have you had any much experience with the wider ones? A little bit with the Rokinons and with the Rokinons. Um, I think strictly the 35 millimeter, because again with the church, they had a whole list of ones and everything. One of them being the 35 millimeter, and at the end of the day, they weren't bad. They are definitely great lenses for what mm -hmm. you're getting there. And I have no qualms about them. They are amazing lenses if you're wanting like a strict prime cine lens. Mm -hmm. um, but I just really, for me, it wasn't so much the focal length itself. It was the versatility and the range. Because it got, if I remember right, the Rokinon um, 35 millimeter has like a 1.8 aperture, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's the same as the Sigma 18 35 but I just felt always when I was using, I felt so constrained because I couldn't go any wider. I was trapped in that 35 millimeter, mm -hmm. which I primarily do event videography and stuff like that. Yes. Primarily do event or um, what do you call it? Event or what would you call it? I'm trying to think of the word. What would it be uh, photo shoots or stuff okay. like that? And okay. uh, with sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's right. Interesting. I'm just looking because I'm watching a lens. I'm just trying to find it and see if I can bring it up. Are oh, you good? Um, Torquina 11 to 16 mm -hmm. millimeter. Because I'm, I'm watching one. There's about a few of them keep popping up. They're about in the UK 200 pounds. Yeah. And they're wide, but they're 2.8. But they are a bit cheaper and they're getting really good reviews online. But from, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it or is that something you've seen? The Torquina I've heard lens? of it. Um, I have heard of it. It is a lens I actually did look into. Mm -hmm. um, but I just didn't have a lot of information on it. Like there was. Um, Anytime I was looking into it, there's a lot of information out there, mm -hmm. but there's nothing really specific for a GH5, and I didn't really get to do a whole lot more research than I normally would. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one reason why I also kept with the 1830, the Sigma. Yeah. And then again, going back to the whole um, yes. why I use the Canon 1.4 experience, I've been using this thing for however long, and it yes. just transferred. And also, yours is a 1.8, whereas the yeah. Tolkien and the Rokin is they're not they're 2.8, so there's a yeah. difference there. So I understand. There's that. that uh, there's that 1.0 difference, and that yeah. makes a difference. Big. It does. It makes a there's a substantial difference for yeah. event photography, and it it really does help that little bit. I didn't think it would at the time, but looking back on it now, it really does help a lot. Yeah. Okay, now that's been really good. Thanks for sharing your lens and your experience with it and the other options available. So what we'll do is, like you mentioned, I'll link in the cards to the extra footage that 
uh, Chris has and we can take it from there and I'll link you to the end cards as well where you'll get more information of previously speaking to him and that's another one great video hopefully we'll do a few more of these with Chris absolutely I'll be up for anything you want okay thank you and I'll see you on the next one